So a while back I actually made a video stating 11 of my Dragon Ball Z confessions. Only 11! So today, I'm going to be giving you 11 more Dragon Ball Z confessions. If you don't know how this works, I'll leave a link to the original video down below. And even if you don't feel like watching that video, you'll understand what I'm saying. If I were to rank Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and Dragon Ball GT out of 10, Dragon Ball would get a 9, Dragon Ball Z would get a 9.5, and Dragon Ball GT would get a 7, because GT was not that bad. Although I really like Dragon Ball Super, I cannot stand the name. I mean, I don't dislike it that much, but I will say for a series as epic as Dragon Ball, the name Dragon Ball Super kind of downplays it. I feel like Dragon Ball Z was a perfect name, and all they would need to do is simplify Dragon Ball Super into Dragon Ball S. But that's just me. Speaking of Dragon Ball Super, Dragon Ball Super's ending is my personal favorite ending to any Dragon Ball series. I never get emotional, but there have been two moments in Dragon Ball where I have had tears in my eyes. I wasn't crying, but there were tears and they were there. The first scene that brought it out of me was when Bora got revived by Goku, and the second was all the way at the end of Dragon Ball GT. I will admit, I was incredibly soft while watching those scenes, but Dragon Ball is the only series that has even come close to making me feel emotional. Bulma is the best looking character in the show. My favorite Dragon Ball Z movie of all time, excluding Battle of Gods and Resurrection F, is the tie between Fusion Reborn, the first Cooler movie, and the original Broly movie. And my least favorite movie is Bio Broly. As much as I love Beerus, I would love to see him die, just to see how things would play out and who the next God of Destruction would actually be. Would it be the person who killed him, or would it be someone completely different? Who knows? I love all the new Dragon Ball content that we are getting. Most of it is pretty solid. But the only thing that I despise with the new material is how Super Saiyan God is made. Don't get me wrong, I like the Super Saiyan God transformation itself, but how it's made is almost as bad as how Super Saiyan 4 is made. Having five pure-hearted Saiyans hold hands and transfer their energy to the Saiyan that's going to become a god is kind of underwhelming. I would have preferred it to be anything else. Even if Whis was the one that had to give them the god power, I still think they could have made that work even better than the Super Saiyan God ritual. The pinnacle of Dragon Ball, in my opinion, happened when Goku first started fighting Mercenary Tao for the second time after he got trained by Korin. The pinnacle of Dragon Ball Z was obviously Teen Gohan Super Saiyan 2, and the pinnacle of Dragon Ball GT was the ending. Even though we saw quite literally none of him in Dragon Ball Z, Oob is one of my favorite characters. I say that because I see so much potential for this character, they would be making a big mistake by not utilizing this guy in Dragon Ball Super. I know that's an unpopular opinion, but I seriously can't help it. We saw a glimpse of what Oob could do in GT, and some of what he did was pretty badass, and then they just stopped using him. I do feel if Dragon Ball Super is successful and Toriyama keeps going, he has to incorporate Oob, it was in the original manga, and we will see Oob's full potential. And I'm telling you right now, it will be great. Dragon Ball for me is one of the only series where I would wipe my mind just to have the experience of watching it again. So that has been 11 more Dragon Ball Z confessions. Let me know if you have any confessions of your own, and as always, I will see you in the next Dragon Ball Z video.